Hello ladies, so today we are going to be drawing hair and facial hair. I've got a picture of Chris Hemsworth here. I went blank on that name for a moment. Make sure that you're using a regular pencil, not a mechanical pencil today, okay? A regular pencil is going to be a lot easier to work with when you are doing the details of the hair. So the first thing I'm going to be doing here is drawing the hairline. That is where the hair meets the face. So that includes the top of the forehead, but also the sides of the face, the temples, right in front of the ears as well. So I'm going to start by very, very lightly erasing the contour hairlines that I have. Not completely erasing. You still want to see them a little bit, but you don't want to have a dark, heavy outline around the edge of your face because it's just not realistic. Probably the most important thing that you want to keep in mind when you are drawing hair is to move with the direction of the hair. Notice that his hair is kind of slicked back, curling off to the right here. Now I'm going to start with the hairline, of course. I'm not going to be working on the whole head just yet, but I'm keeping that in mind, moving with the direction of the hair. Look at what direction the hair is moving in as it's coming out of the top of the head. As I'm getting started here, I'm just going to be doing a few light pencil lines to suggest where that hairline is, where it's connecting to the forehead. It is so, so important that you use a very light touch of the pencil. I recommend using a very well sharpened pencil as well, because that will give you more of that realistic hair look, those little strands of hair. I'm just continuing on here lightly implying where that hairline is. I'm looking at the direction that the hair is moving in as it's coming out of the sides of the head and just flowing along with it. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually start filling in the hair. One thing that I want you to keep in mind is again the direction of the hair. You don't want to just fill in by just using a bunch of little straight choppy lines like this. You want to really focus on the curves that you see. If the hair is more curly, follow the direction of the curves. If the hair is more straight, you might have more straight lines, but really people with straight hair, it's not just going to be stick straight pins coming out of the hair. Follow that curve, look for that curve. And you want to have the hair that you're filling in here blend in with that hairline that you just made. You want to try to blend those lines together, get them to flow together nicely. I'm still using a very light pencil touch here. Not so light where you can't see it at all, but I'm really trying to avoid pressing hard with the pencil here. What we're basically creating right now is our mid-tones in the hair. We will be going back and adding in the darker values and the lighter values as well. But I'm just looking at where the hair is growing out of, trying to mimic those curves. I'm looking closely at where the hair changes direction. You might notice that in that upper left corner of his head, some hair curves off to the right side, like I'm drawing right now, and then some curves off to the left, like I'm drawing right now. You may not be able to 100% see where the hair is, um, especially if the hair is very dark or it's in shadow. But take a look at that hairline, take a look at the highlights in the hair, and just use your best educated guess on which direction the hair is going. Also, don't forget that you can rotate your paper as well. Remember that your hand probably has a preference on the direction that it wants to draw lines in. For example, my hand likes to do these kind of going down to the left curves when I'm drawing upside down rather than going up and to the right. So practice it a little bit. Rotate your paper, see what works best for you. If you feel like your lines just aren't going the right direction, move your paper around, see what works for you. 
This method of drawing hair really works for any hair type. If the hair is more wavy, work in more wavy lines. If it's more of a coiled sort of hair texture, work in small circles. Just whatever the direction the lines are moving in, just go with it. Okay, so now that we have our basic lines done, you can go ahead and grab, if you have one at home, a tortillion stump. I have a few here, but if you don't have one, one thing that you can do, a little life hack here, is to take a paper towel and wrap it really, really tight around um, the eraser side of a pencil and then secure it with tape. You want to wrap it really tight, as tight as you can, to mimic the texture of a tortillion stump. Now you want to blend the hair, but still move with the direction of the hair. You don't want to go from side to side or in circles if that's not what the hair is doing. So I'm just following along with the curves of the hair, blending those pencil strokes together. Not too, too much, but just a very light touch of the blender to get them to just flow together a little bit more. Okay, so now we're going to start working on some of our darker values, our shadows. Now, if you have a set of drawing pencils at home, you want to use about a 3B or a 4B pencil. Um, I'm guessing most of you don't have um, these kind of special drawing pencils at home, so just use a regular number two pencil. You're just going to be pressing a little bit harder to get some darker values out of your pencil. So I'm just starting on an area where I notice in the photograph there are some darker shadowy areas. Again, if you're using a regular number two pencil, you're just going to be pressing a little bit harder than you were before. I'm using a 3B weight drawing pencil. These pencils naturally are a little bit darker. Um, the higher the B letter, the darker they are. So I'm not pressing super hard, but again, if you're just using a regular pencil, that's fine. Just press a little bit harder to get them to be a little bit darker. Still moving with the direction of the hair. Now at the top of the head, you might notice that the area around the hairline is usually in shadow because it's closest to the head. Um, the hair is kind of casting a shadow over top. So around where the hair comes right out of the top of the head, there's usually going to be some shadows there. So still moving with the direction of the hair adding in some of those darker shadows. Not going too crazy going throughout the whole hair just yet. Just kind of dropping in the impression of some darker values. So now that I'm done um, working on darkening up the top of the hairline, I'm going to start breaking up the rest of the hair into chunks. Um, our strands of hair tend to sort of group together in what are called locks of hair. So I'm going to go in here with my pencil and really start to kind of separate those locks of hair. Just looking at the photograph, looking at where things get a little bit darker, it's kind of hard to see. Um, on your screen probably, but I'm noticing that the hair sort of groups up into these chunks. And I'm using my darker pencil strokes to separate out those chunks of hair. You can see a little bit easier up in here where I'm working right now. There are some highlights in the hair that I'm kind of working around. I'm seeing this really dark area right up here in the upper right corner of the hair. And I'm seeing how these groups of strands of hair are really moving together. And I'm just trying to emulate that. I'm seeing a lot of long locks of hair, especially up here in the top. You can see sort of where those pieces of hair are. So I'm just going in here, imagining them as solid forms, not necessarily strands of hair, just these solid forms that have shadows and highlights all on their own. I'm just defining the forms right now. Really make sure you're referring back to your photograph. Look at where those shadows are what shapes they're making, what directions they're moving in, the line direction. Are they curving? Are they coiling? Are they more straight? Use your photograph to help you. I think this part of drawing the hair is actually kind of fun, breaking it into chunks of hair, these sort of locks of hair. That really helps to define just how the hair looks in real life in general. It locks together.
And once you're done with all of your darker values, go ahead and blend them with your blending tool. Keep going with the direction of the hair. Don't press too hard. Things might get a little bit messy outside of your drawing. You might get some smudges going on. You can just go in there with your eraser and clean up your edges a bit when you're finished. So now we have our midtones and our shadows. Now what we need to do is add in those highlights. Now there's a couple of tools that you can use for this. If you have one of those little retractable eraser tools, um, I really like to use one of those. It's one of these guys. You can use um, a regular sort of freestanding eraser, or you can use the eraser that you have at the end of your pencil. But one thing is really important, no matter what kind of eraser that you're using, your eraser needs to have a sort of I don't want to say a sharp edge, but more of an angular edge, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. If you're using a regular eraser, the eraser mark is going to be very blunt, like it's going to be a very thick eraser mark. You're going to take off a lot of pencil. So what you want to do is actually sort of cut your eraser. You want to give it a more of a sort of sharp edge. You want to be careful when you're doing this. A sharp edge like so so that way when you're going in there and, and erasing the area of pencil that you're taking off is actually sort of a skinnier line like this you don't want to use an eraser that's too blunt on the end you want to have a somewhat sharp edge that doesn't mean it has to be pointy it just has to have an angled edge just like so and that will really help to make those important skinny little highlights that hair has. So you can do this on really any kind of eraser. Just make sure that you're being careful not to cut yourself. So this is for those lightest parts of the hair, right where the light is reflecting off of the surface of the hair. So go ahead in there with your eraser and start to just do some very, very light touches of the eraser just to test it out. See what happens. You might need to press a little bit harder or you might need to be gentler. It really depends on how good your eraser is, how sharp you were able to get it. So I'm going to turn my paper over here so I can get a better angle at what I'm doing. Now with every pass of the eraser, every time you use the eraser, or every two or three eraser strokes, you want to actually clean the eraser off or else you're going to get a buildup of that pencil, that graphite, and it's just not going to be as effective. So every two or three passes with the eraser, wipe it off onto some surface. Now, if the person you're drawing has blonde hair, you're going to be doing a lot more erasing. Typically, the darker the hair, the less erasing you're going to do. And if the hair that um, the person has is very, very dark, like pretty much black hair, you might not even be doing much erasing at all. Pretty much the highlights that you'll be looking for on really dark hair come from those mid-tones that you drew first. Do one last pass of your blending tool just to pull everything together and then clean up those smudges with your eraser. You can clean up the hairline a little bit, redefine where the hair is growing out of the top of the head, and you are done with the hair portion. And now we can move on to the eyebrows. So hopefully you have the contour lines of your eyebrows done. You want to make sure that they are very, very light so that you don't just have these big blocky shapes for your eyebrows. And this process is pretty much the same as the head hair. The only difference is focusing on how long the individual hairs are in the eyebrows. They're going to be a lot shorter than the hairs on the top of the head. Still focus on line direction here. I just lightly erased my contour lines there. I can still see them, but I don't want them to be very obvious in my final drawing. So I'm just moving with the curves of the eyebrow hairs. Drawing very lightly here, not pressing too hard.
I also want to stress how important it is to keep sharpening your pencil. Make sure you got a nice sharp tip. And pretty much once you've laid out all of your mid-tones on the eyebrows, you're going to go in there with your heavier pressure on your pencil and start to darken up those areas. Look at what parts of the eyebrows have darker values and just add them in there. Still moving in the same direction that the hair is going in, just with a little bit more pressure, drawing what you see. And then you can go in there with your eraser, clean some things up, and then blend those eyebrows on out just a little tiny bit. Don't press too hard with your blender. Okay, so let's move on to our facial hair here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the basic contour outlines of the facial hair using a very light touch of the pencil, just so I can map out where I'm going to be drawing the facial hair. It's really important not to press too hard when you're doing the contour outlines because you will be erasing these later. Once you're done with your contours, sharpen your pencil again. Just using a basic number two pencil. And then pretty much the same deal as with the eyebrows and with the head hair. Move in the direction that the hairs are going in. But for the facial hair, really pay attention to how short each strand of hair is. They're not going to be as long as the head hair, and they might not even be as long as the eyebrow hairs. If it's just stubble, you're probably only going to do little tiny short pencil marks, barely longer than a dot. Just little slight tick marks. I can't stress enough how important it is to move with the direction of the hair. Really look at it. Really look at how long each piece is, which way the hairs are pointing. And if you want to start by kind of traveling along with the contour lines, you can. I'm just kind of going in here and putting them in randomly, looking at where the hairs get a little bit more dense, where they're a little bit further apart, and just putting in those little tick marks. If the facial hair is longer than stubble, still pay attention to the line direction. Are the facial hairs curling? Are they more wavy? Are they more of straight lines? They're probably not going to be just straight lines. They're probably going to have some small amount of curve to them. I'm just redefining the mouth here just a bit so you can see a little bit better how far out I'm going with my facial hair. Usually around the top lip, the facial hair gets a little bit thinner and then it quickly gets more dense as it gets closer to the nose. Now I've sped up the video, but this process of filling in the facial hair does take a while. It can be meditational in, in a way if you think of it like that. Just kind of filling in the lines, going around the edges, getting those in-between areas. I don't really have much of a method of where I like to start first. I just sort of fill in wherever my mind takes me. But do pay attention to the density of the facial hair. Almost think about it like when we did our Zentangle animals and we talked about how to make shadows. We get those lines denser, get them closer to each other. And that will help to create the illusion that the hair really is denser, but also just to create those values. Around the chin area, things are going to get a lot darker just because that part is in shadow. I'm starting to really see what parts of the facial hair are a lot darker and which parts are lighter, and just trying to add more little bits of stubble to accommodate what I'm seeing. When you are finished, you want to make sure you remove your contour line very gently with your eraser. And then just blend very, very lightly. And you're done.